hello, Bianca Marie here. So excited for you to be here for another doula community chat. Our doula community chats are just for us. They are a time where we can lay our head down and we can just relax and talk amongst us birth workers, typically doulas, lactation consultants, and others. Um, we can talk about what's going on in our world, what's going on with our clients, what's going on um, when it comes to hospitals and birthing centers and so many different things like that. And so welcome. Um, today we're going to be talking about a topic that's um, sensitive. Um, it could possibly be a trigger for others. And so I want to just put that up front, um, that just when we have this conversation, just know it's coming from my heart and coming from a place where we're trying to make sure that we are best positioned to help our clients that may experience pregnancy um, or infant loss. And so this particular chat, we're going to, um, of course, welcome everybody as usual, right? Um, anyone, uh, whether you're a new doula, aspiring doula, I've been a doula for years and years, um, um, wherever you are in the season, welcome. Um, this is one that's pre-recorded. Um, sometimes we do all live um, and you could join via Zoom or Facebook group. Um, and then sometimes they're pre-recorded such as this one and then it's posted. Um, but every Friday at noon Eastern, know that we are gonna have an opportunity to chat with your fellow doulas through this doula community chat, either through the Zoom or the Facebook group, or you can see the posting um, on YouTube or somewhere else. So just mark your calendars for Fridays at noon um, Eastern time, then know that you're gonna get some good information about something in our wonderful birth worker world. Um, specifically today we're talking about as doulas, how we can support and be there to help our clients that are uh, possibly facing um, pregnancy or infant loss. Not an easy subject um, for many of us from a personal reason and professional um, standpoint, um, but it's one that if we don't do our due diligence as much as we can proactively, we may find ourselves lacking or find ourselves um, at the last minute, just you know, scrambling to try to help our families. Every single situation, every single experience is unique, right? So by no means is this a one-all catch-all, do this ABC, you know, this perfect formula equation and everything as well. No, that is not the space that we're coming from. We're coming from a space of at least as a birth worker, be aware of some of the things that we may be able to simply offer. And if the family welcomes it, if it's the right time, if it's appropriate, then at least we have done something to try to help in a, in a um, unique situation. Okay, so with that, welcome, welcome, welcome. If it's your first time, let us know. Put your um, information in the comments, such as where you are from and what type of birth worker that you are, if you're a doula, if you're a birth, um, labor doula, postpartum, full spectrum, um, infertility, whatever it is. Um, let us know because we love to connect and interact and network with each other. And it's helpful to know who's around when we're talking. And uh, then when you're providing your comments and your feedback um, and resources that you may be aware of, it's good to know where they're coming from, right? So I'm um, in the um, Washington, D.C., Maryland area. So some resources I may know here, someone in Florida may not be aware of it, or it may just be per you know, pertinent or pertaining only to my area. So that helps if we share where we're from and what kind of doula we are or what kind of birth worker we are. So it helps frame our, um, our input and our recommendations. So with that, um, I am very intentional, right? With the wording, with the language, with um, the energy that I put out when I talk about this subject, with anything pretty much we do as well as a birth workers, we should be anyway, right? But what I'm saying is I am overly um, intentional because this can be a time where your words can be taken so many different ways and you don't, you know, don't mean for it to um, be taken quote unquote the wrong way, but it could be, it could be considered insensitive, right? And so that is the first reminder that I really have for doulas, um, and especially with the clients that I've had, I, I learned very quickly where the space that you're coming from is important, but the words that you say and your actions speak even louder, right? So with that, I jotted down a couple notes. Um, I normally don't do too many notes, but I jot it down notes because I want it to be very intentional, make sure we provide the value for everyone who's watching. Um, so 
um, pregnancy loss, right, or infant loss? How do we support? How do we help? How do we give where we need to give and step back when we need to step back? Um, it's a little dance to that, right? There's no, like I said, there's no secret equation or secret formula. There's no perfect way. You know, what works for one client may be different for another client. Um, so you have to be sensitive to that and figure out what's the best way. Um, um, specifically, one of the comments that I received before this video when we were talking about different topics that we should talk about in our chat um, was around stillbirth, a lot of questions around stillbirth. Um, and so I want to make sure that we address, you know, as our community, we address whatever um, we need in order to feel confident um, to be able to provide the support that we need to. Okay, so this is stillbirth, right? Um, a death or a loss before delivery, before or even during delivery, okay? Um, the miscarriage and silver, they both are types of pregnancy loss, right? Um, but they can differ depending on when the loss actually occurs, right? So when you're talking about pregnancy loss, it's a broader um, term that covers more, right? It covers a couple of different situations or scenarios. Um, it could be stillbirth, it could be miscarriage and so forth. Um, causes, gosh, you know, if we just had a crystal ball to be able to know when and why exactly and things, you know, that would be helpful, but we don't. Um, it could be so many different causes from infections, different types of complication, preeclampsia, all sorts of different things. Um, and so that is something that some of my clients that have faced it have expressed was just like if they, it, it would help them to have some sort of um, understanding or closure, um, whatever way you want to classify it, if they just knew why. You know, um, and as a doula, I don't know why. Nobody knows why. Nobody has that crystal ball. But at the same time, just reminding a client that um, that is a valid feeling and a valid want. Don't try to say that, oh, um, I know how you feel, or one day we'll find out why, or one day we'll understand. That can come off so wrong. It's an, it's 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 not wrong, you know, the the wording. Like we you know, maybe years from now they may understand something different or think of it in a different view. But that is not the language and the wording that I would suggest um, sharing, right? Um, in a time when somebody's talking to you from a place of pain like that. Um, so anyway, so different causes, uh, different reasons. Um, there are some tests that you can try to take um, to find out why, um, and that could kind of be helpful maybe to be preventive in the future. Um, but a lot of it is we don't know, right? And so it could be for various, 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 various reasons. Um, so as doulas and as birth workers, um, what can we do? right? What can we do is the main question, right? What can we do in our practice to support families um, facing pregnancy loss or infant loss? Um, and the first thing I'll just say is just share the space. Share the space. Allow them to let you know what kind of space they need, right? So share the space is the first tip. Um, share the space meaning allow them to share with you, allow them to lead you, allow you to guide you to whatever kind of level support that they want, right? So if that means that the birthing person or that mom or the birthing person wants you to just sit there at the end of the bed, you know, maybe a postpartum visit and you're over at the house or you're on the phone and you just sit there and you just listen to them cry, share that space. Yeah. Um, if that means that they want you to, um, I've had the request of going with them to a counselor, share that space. It was not about me, right? It's all about them. And so sharing that space, knowing that it's, a, a, being a doula is being an honor anyway, right? Sharing that birth space, whether it's in a hospital room and, you know, um, delivery room or birthing center, that sharing space anyway. So what I am saying is even in this time, continue to share that space and honor that space um, in whatever way that they need it. So let them lead you. Don't try to force it. Don't try to um, come in with a grand plan, 
allow them to lead you and you follow and sharing that space respectfully. Um, some practical things that you can do is as a doula, um, if you're, you know, a postpartum doula, you're going through that direction, um, check on the family, the kids, things that we probably would do anyway, but if there's other kids, or, you know, um, do they, do they eat? <laughs> you know, do they have um, a clean space? You know, the home? Um, is it tidy? I've, I've hired cleaning services for family. I've done meal planning and prepping and those sorts of services for the family. So what I'm saying is allow the birthing person or their mom to have the opportunity to just zone out if you can. And then some of those extra things, some of those household things, if you're able, you know, and that's what you do as a doula and that's part of your services and what you think you will work with that space that you're sharing. If you can, try to take care of some of those small things so they don't have to worry about dinner. And it could be something as simple as, you know, a grandparent or a neighbor or somebody else that you may coordinate with. I've set up calendars, you know, for family meals. So since I had to link to some key people that they already had let me know about and gave me their email addresses, and I reached out to them and said, you know, Monday, this person delivers this food. Tuesday, this person delivers this food. Wednesday is takeout night from a restaurant. So my point is I, you know, made sure that the, um, at least, their dietary needs were met, right? And that's so um, minor, but yet so big, right? Um, um, uh, also, if you can, and you know, again, it depends on the client, the relationship with the client, what you may have already discussed, just in general, you have to know what works and what flows for the particular family. But another idea that I've um, seen work um, pretty well, pretty re well received, was also if there are other siblings or children, seeing and this you have to okay with everything take it with a grain of salt knowing that everybody's environment is different and where we are with COVID is different right but if you're able to and it works if the, the other siblings can go for a day or two with a neighbor with grandparents whomever and let the family maybe the the birthing person and the mom and the spouse or the partner whoever maybe they may want the evening alone you know so think about anything like that, that you can kind of give help create a space that you think they're asking for. So if, you know, if a client tells me, I don't want to talk to anybody, I don't want any phone calls, I don't want any visitors, I don't want any food, I don't want anybody asking me how I'm feeling. So that tells me that if there's anything I can do to help create a cocoon around her for the day, two days, whatever, but it, give her that space help support or create, help her support in creating that space. You see what I'm saying? Um, so this is a little different, right? So normally in our chats, we have like, you know, one, two, three, here's some steps to this, but this is one that you have to really make sure that you honor the wishes and honor that space and knowing that healing process is a lot to it, right? It's more than a notion. Um, some other things, right? Um, so outside of um, sharing that space and knowing when to, you know, zip the lips, zip the lips, a lot of times it may just be listening. If they want you just to hug them, hug them. If they just want to cry, sit there and let them cry. Cry with them. I've done, I've done that. You know, we, when it hurt, hurts, right? Um, don't just say platitudes because, again, you don't know how it's going to come out, right? And it could be from the best place of intention, the best heart place, but it could come out so wrong, right? Um, and if you don't have anything to say, just simply say, I am here for you. I'm here for you. When you're ready, let me know if there's anything you need and leave it at that, right? You don't have to come as a doula. You don't have to come with a whole um, bag of tricks or something you're trying to just, I'm here for you. And that's what I mean by allowing them to lead you, right? And I am referring to them a lot because a lot of times you don't want to forget the partner if the partner is present whether it's the spouse the partner whoever you want to know that there's going to be healing that's required from everybody even the grandparents even the grandparents i have a course on working with the grandparents even the grandparents right so everybody's going to have their own healing journey and it's going to be integrated it's going to be mixed and mingled a little bit as a doula you know, when you're doing your postpartum business, when you have that conversation, just be aware that there's many different pieces happening, right? And so that's why I keep saying them. What kind of space do they need? And 
the spouse or the partner may need, may need a different type of space than the birthing person. Be aware of that. Be aware of the nuances. Be aware about if there's anything that you need to do differently to honor that. Okay. Um, yeah. And I would say as a doula, so, you know, we have our postpartum package, right? And we normally say, you know, we have after the birth, two visits, three visits, four visits, whatever the case is. When I ex experience with clients that have gone through pregnancy or infant loss, I've always automatically extended my check-ins. And I just call them check-ins because it's not necessarily postpartum um, visits, but my check-ins. Because, you know, having the experience and being home and transitioning immediately after from a loss, um, you, you know, you're facing things immediately, right? Your home, her, you know, the hormones are, are still raging and that's not gone yet. So what I'm saying is checking in at that two week mark, checking in at a two day mark, checking in at a four day mark is very different from checking in at a six month mark. It's very different from checking in at a nine month mark. I will still be checking in at a nine month and a year mark. That's me. So what I am recommending then just as another tidbit uh, extend your check-ins with them to see how they're doing. And it can come in various ways, right? So it can be um, you're checking in from a phone call, you're checking in with a text, you're checking in with sending them a basket of flowers or sending them something else that you think may put a smile on their face, right? So you do a check-in. And when it comes to having a loss, that check-in immediately is different from that check-in months later. Okay, and that's in general with the grieving process, right? Because there's different layers and there's different levels to the grieving process. And so, you know, the immediate where you're trying to wrap your mind around it, that immediate exposure to that loss and the trauma is different from six months or a year, two years, three years. So as a doula, I would just recommend think about what is it that you are ready to, you are prepared to be able to do to help them in the longer term. Um, and then also, if you find that you are um, still unsure of being able to provide some sort of assistance and help in this in this regard, then in your network, connect with a um, deaf doula or a bereavement doula and just connect with them. You should have one in your network anyway, just to be aware, but um, connect with them. Maybe they have suggestions, maybe they have recommendations, they have different roles that they play with that, um, with that situation, different role as in knowing about resources and they may have some um, suggestions for you or you possibly could introduce them to the family if you think that that's helpful, right? So um, one is share the space, right? <laughs> knowing what, um, being very intentional in what you're saying, being very intentional in your language um, and then also no resources, right? That's something that we can do, right? Knowing the no resources that are available. Um, so just a couple quick things. Um, it can, the resources can be as simple as knowing when the time is appropriate and it's right, right? So that's the caveat. But maybe there's some books that you find helpful. Um, maybe some videos that you may find that's helpful. Um, but again, you want to make be very astute and very aware of when and how you share these types of information and resources. Um, and it can be um, uh, being aware of online and in-person support groups, support groups that happen at hospitals, happen you know, at religious institutions, churches and things, at schools, uh, support groups happen all over. Um, there's different support groups, um, even in Facebook, you know, Facebook groups. And so being aware of that, and if you find, um, that that may be something that your birthing person or family members of your client are interested in, as a doula, just be aware of it, right? Be aware of it to be able to recommend it if they ask. Um, another part, though, um, when it comes to if the baby, if it's a stillbirth, right? Um, knowing, the, knowing the hospital policies could be helpful, meaning, um, different hospitals have different plans, they have different ways of doing it, but there's some key pieces that are pretty across the board. Um, and a website, um, tommys.org, T-O-M-Y, T-O-M-M-Y-S.org, 
um, is helpful. Um, and it just gives more information about how hospitals work because um, there are some choices that your clients um, have, right? So do they want the hospital to take care of, you know, cremation or any sort of funeral arrangements? Or do they want to do that privately, right? With their own or a, a, a funeral home or somewhere in their own community versus the hospital taking care of it. So that's one of the first main choices that they need, will, they will need to make. Um, there's some hospital policies, you know, if the, you know, if it's after 24 weeks, then they automatically have to be cremated. So it just, like I say, just kind of be aware of the hospitals in your area and just so you can, or at least be aware of where you can go get that information if you needed to in a, in a quick, you know, in a quick time. Um, and then there's some that, you, you know, and then there's a choice of, do you want to hold a service at the hospital versus on your own? Um, a chaplain maybe um, at the hospital could be somebody that can help with that type of information as well. Um, a big part, I think, is resources. A big part is resources as a doula. One of the best things you can do is just being aware and being able to help point them um, or at least be aware of what should be happening next. For example, um, you know, the hospital usually would get in touch with the general um, the, the, the doc, her doctor or the birthing person's doctor the hospital so after the loss the um let's say the stillbirth after that the hospital should be letting her doctor know if it you know if so many different caveats y'all i'm sorry i'm trying to put this together in a very concise way but there's a lot of different nuances but essentially the hospital should let the doctor know if her doctor wasn't there for the delivery right but either way to start the process the hospital should know, should let them know, or the midwife or whoever, right? Um, the birthing person still sh still should have a checkup, okay? They should still have their, you know, six-week checkup. Um, so they should have an appointment to be able to talk to the doctor um, about the birth as well as um, post-mortem. Yeah, they should have that. So as a doula, just be aware that there's still some things that she would need or the birthing person would need to do um, as if it was, you know, a healthy delivery. Um, so having a checkup, having a follow-up, being able to um, know that those things need to be scheduled. Um, so yeah, the six-week check. Um, there's some different thoughts about with those follow-up appointments. Um, there's some people who would want to go by themselves and there's some that want to do it as a couple. I have seen hospitals um, and different, um, even doctors, private physicians, I've seen them do um, different modifications of that type of appointment in order to support if it's going to be um, a larger group than just a birthing person. Does that make sense? And so, you know, the, the checkup is private, right? So you want to have everybody there while you're doing a checkup. But I've seen it where the mom has gone to the room, had the physical checkup, but then when they wanted to have like more of a conversation about feelings and thoughts and where they are in the healing process and um, next steps and things, then they just move to another room down the hall. And that's where, um, and this is before COVID, but that's where, the grandparents as well as the husband was there. And so she wasn't alone in um, the second part of her appointment, right? So my point is as a doula, just kind of be aware as to what the hospital policies are or where you can find them. And then so depending on what your, your client is being asked and some decisions that they have to make, you if you're playing that part um, in that journey, if you're part of that journey and that role in that journey, then you can at least know what you're able to offer and you at least be aware of what they are going through. So again, so you can contribute when and if appropriate. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. Um, I don't want to keep going too, too, too much into that, but I would just say knowing the rights um, of the family, um, depending on the hospital, depending on the situation, um, many families have make choose to actually take the baby home. Um, so knowing the rights of that, um, how long the baby could be home, when the baby could be home, um, when those decisions need to make, be made about if the hospital is going to do a service or a cremation, 
um, knowing um, that if that happens, a lot of times it's not an individual funeral or individual, um, excuse me, it's not an a individual burial or individual cremation, it's usually a collective. So um, it's a couple um, angels, babies together um, versus individual. And so that may be a deciding factor for your family. Do they want to do something individual more private or do they, are they okay with the hospital taking care of those types of arrangements? So um, to not drag this out, just wanted to say, we as doulas and birth workers, as I always say, have a very unique position to be able to support families physically and emotionally. And when our families are facing um, pregnancy or infant loss, it is absolutely a whole different world, right? And so as doulas, we still should be prepared and at least be aware of some things that we can do to support them. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, just some basic things I just wanted to share about opening, you know, making sure you're aware of the space and honoring this space and knowing some resources, um, okay? And then being um, very intentional in whatever you're doing, intentional in your language, your words, intentional in your activities, you know, um, in, in your intentional in all of your expressions. Um, so those are the three main tips that I would just say, um, but then certainly um, just, knowing what the options are and some resources that you can share when and if the time is appropriate. Um, this is not one that we experience, we experience that we face on a daily basis, but it doesn't matter whenever you do it, face it, it's just as vital and important to be prepared. And so this particular month, um, this we're um, talking about this in different ways, um, but this particular chat, just wanted to at least mention those resources, um, some suggestions. I will make sure that I also will post um, in the chat um, and then also at the end of the video, some other resources that may be helpful. Because um, again, some of our doulas, like Tommy's is not in the United States. Um, Tommy's or um, is um, in a different country. And so there's depending on where you are, there's different resources. Um, and we have doulas all over um, the world in our community. And so I just wanted to make sure that everyone is covered because everybody um, can possibly have this um, experience with their clients. So um, love everyone, um, love and light to everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful week. And I hope that um, this chat and other chats always leave you feeling prepared and a little more um, empowered to be the best birth worker that you are envisioning to be. So look forward to our next chat. Um, don't forget to um, be a part of the Facebook group if you haven't already signed into it, um, as well as follow me on Instagram, um, the official Bianca Marie, and then also subscribe to the YouTube channel. because I'm going to start putting some more videos out there um, because on our chats on Fridays, we only have about an hour together, but then there's a whole bunch of other topics that um, folks are reaching out to me saying, let's talk about this, let's do this, or you know, do you know about this event? So I think we're going to need to put a little a few more um, um, videos and things out there. So I'm just going to put that on YouTube so you can just grab it whenever. Okay. So with that, I will talk to you all later.